We are, we are ready. All right, let's make a formal introduction for our listeners. Uh, good morning, guys. My name is Claudia. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., from the Studios in Fairfax City. We're very humble and grateful that better stranger accepted our invitation to our show. Guys, welcome to the show, man. How's it going? We uh, usually like to start the interview with this uh, similar question. You know, the last two years have been very weird with the pandemic. Uh, you know, some people believe in the vaccine, some people don't or not, but uh, as, as you guys are touring musicians and how affected your your life, your your sanity, how are you holding up? I think COVID is coming back again and, you know, it's affecting everybody. No, whether you're a musician or not, it's completely relevant. But it, it's an, all my questions are ended. So who, whoever wants to elaborate, it, it, it's fine. So Yeah, I mean, I think it worked, it worked out for us. Um in a way because we live so far away that um because covid was a thing um traveling was was super cheap and so for for, for i mean for me or for us it just gives us gave i mean gives us the ability to be able to see each other way more often than if covid is it wasn't a thing yeah. um i we, we were able to travel a lot so i mean in, in, in that aspect it was good but um there were also shitty parts about it, which I guess we, anybody else can. can yeah, I mean, I think, I think for the first year. What? That we couldn't play for the first year. We were, we were very much like a studio band. Like everything was conducted in the studio and all the songs that we wrote, like we couldn't test them out live. So we just ended up releasing an EP um, that first year before we even ever played a show. And we quickly realized that we had to start kind of adapting our sound to uh, to kind of move the audience a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that first year was it, it was it was helpful for us to just connect as a as a band and you know friends and musicians. But as far as like actually knowing musically what we were gonna do, um, that really was we were able to kind of get that down when we were actually able to play live so yeah like Yang said the first year was a bit hard I mean to be honest though we you know we're based in Miami so COVID's kind of been done for us since like June of 2020 like that they've kind of stopped you know doing anything down here so we've had the the you know the opera like the luck and opportunity that we were able to start touring or playing shows in summer of 2021 yeah so we've had quite some time now that we've just been able to to go out and do it I mean obviously you know, we've had a few times where some of us have gotten sick and that's just part of it. But I think, you know, now we're, we're kind of, you know, not really looking back uh, at this point. Perfect. And uh, besides, of course, I, I know Nick came from a family uh, with, with music was important. So were any of you were born into a musical family? How old were you when you perhaps began taking, you know, piano lesson or guitar lessons, bring it up to, to when you were a little kid, how music came to your yes. life? Yes and no. Um, I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody in my family was like a school musician or or uh, or had a career in in any way. But um, you know, anytime we'd meet in the countryside, at least at my dad's family, um, there was all there was always a, always music going on, and and you know the people in the like in the in back in the countryside and like the 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 neighborhood. Um, yeah you know, they would all just, they were always just playing instrument. It's just like, you know, older people. And I uh, look at that and you're like, I kind of want to be a part of that, you know, just, or just the life of the party. And so that, I think to me, that was kind of like the first, okay, this is really cool. Um, I like music in terms of being involved in it, not just listening to it. Um, but that's kind of where it all started, I think. Very young for me. <clears throat> My um my my great grandma was actually like a very big was part of like a, one of the most important orchestras in Argentina and she used to play in El Teatro de Colón which is like oh. a famous uh, symphony and famous uh, theater oh. um and I guess that's where my genes are like come from in terms of like being a a musical person but nobody in my in in like in my close family plays music um. My brother played guitar as a as a young kid, and that's kind of where I started. But my 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 musical journey um, kind of amped up when I met Nick uh, in in middle school, and we kind of became friends and and just played music together, and then we we're listening to bands together. So 
it kind of just amped up uh, with my friend group. Yeah. What about you? Joe is quiet, so we need to ask him. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I'm, it's kind of the same answer. Nobody in my immediate family um, is musical. I'm teaching my sister to play guitar right now, though. Um, my family appreciates music, but nobody nobody plays anything. Um, when yeah. I, was a, I mean, maybe a cousin. When I was a kid, I had a cousin who skated and played guitar, and I thought it was cool. Yeah. By the way, young, I was born in Chile, and I came to the United States to study oh. after after high school, and I ended up staying oh, all my life now. I was coming. I told my dad I was coming for four years. That was 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, at the time, see, right now, all the bands in the last, I don't know, 50, all the bands are going, uh, you know, are going to Latin America to do, to go do gigs because they can make good money there. But 30 years ago, bands were not going to Latin America. So I was going crazy. I, I used to, uh, you know, buy all the records, uh, The, you know, the Genesis, the Pink Floyd, the Peter Gabriel, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and I couldn't see the band. So I was, in a way, I, I got lucky on the way and I was able to come here to see shows. And where I live, I see um, close to 40 or 50 shows a year. I, I go everywhere. Wow. So, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, the last tour of Genesis, Nick, I, I saw you guys uh, seven times. Uh, oh, wow. Washington, D.C. I saw them in Philadelphia. I flew to Boston the last two nights because it was an important event from the Genesis because Genesis started their career United here in, in Boston in, in 1972. So it was like, I think your dad mentioned that, you know, for us it's important, it's 50 year anniversary. And then I flew to London to see the last three nights. It was for me, you know, I'm a big time. Uh, you know genesis fan with especially with peter gabriel era as well and uh, so we it were, was a special trip so uh, we we went as a as a whole band to to go support nick at the at the really Washington all Texas. right uh, that was a great the, show yeah i took a lot of pictures yeah. yeah. hey so we're, we're talking about we're talking about genesis so i have a surprise for nick <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i wasn't sure if Nick was coming so i needed to do that uh, but it's uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very good band. It's, uh, there are a lot of great bands out there as well. What kind oh, of music yeah, were you guys? Kind. I'm sorry, go ahead, Nick. No, 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 nothing. I was just saying thanks. That's very kind. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. I'm, for coming I'm out like, to the show. It's not, you know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> a nice person. I'm a nice person. And uh, what kind of music were you listening? You guys were in some of, the, of you were in high school together. What kind of bands were you listening to at the time? We all, I mean, we all think... really listened to Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we all come from different musical backgrounds and, you know, yeah. different, like what we're into, but we definitely connected on a, you know, when we were in high school and, you know, the Chili Peppers and, you know, bands like them and the Foo Fighters, and those were just bands that like made you want to be in a band as kids. And then obviously since then, you you know, everybody's grown into their own musical taste, but that was definitely one point of of common interest that we all landed on was when, you know, we all, dis, you know, dis, well, me, Yang and Joey kind of already went through the Chili Peppers thing together. But then when we met yeah. Ricky and found out he also loved the Chili Peppers, we were just like, oh my God, we're going to be best friends. You know what I mean? Like it was just, <laughs> it just we just connected on, 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 on that. But <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, like that was probably the first, I mean, them, like them and the Foo Fighters and Zeppelin were the first like three bands that I really like obsessed over um in like you know early high school i don't know about the rest of the guys yeah zeppelin yeah. was on there for me yeah mm -hmm. well it, i mean and we talk about this all the time but there, there's just so much footage of the chili peppers that you really get to just it's almost like watching a like a like a like a movie you know mm -hmm. um and you you just get to learn so much about them as a band and as like as friends really outside of just being on stage because that's what that's what it really is that I think to me that was the cool part seeing like them backstage and and hanging out and like sure. going to a different country and like getting on the plane and it's that stuff that you're like I want to live that life you know that's that's what I want to do I want to go to Japan and just fucking act crazy um <laughs> and so it's it's I t yeah that that was kind of like my first you know I wouldn't say my first like love, uh, like in terms of music and stuff, because obviously there's there's a bunch of shit that came before, um, in in bite bite sized, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
but that was like the first obsession for sure that I was like, holy fuck, this is crazy. This is this is what it could be like, you know? So yeah, for sure. Very difficult to be a musician, as you guys know. It's of course maybe three, five percent of bands end up made in, making it and making money, but the rest it's uh, it's very, very tough. You know, during the pandemic, many people that um, you know, used to count on touring as a, as a way to supplement their income, they disappeared. They went back to school, they got other jobs and so forth, right? So it's, it's very difficult to be a musician. Um, how was, what was the motivation to, for forming the band to begin with? Um, uh, well, Yang and I, like Yang said earlier, like Yang and I met in middle school and we started playing music together. Yep. Um, and that naturally progressed into making a band. Um, yep in like our ninth grade year in, in um I think that was when it was yeah ninth grade in high school yep. and then we met Joey and then Joey Yang and I had just been playing in bands together for you know since 2015 um you know different bands different styles different members um so it was always like we always knew that we were playing music together um yep. and then in 2019 we parted ways with um you know our singer at the time and we just kind of spent the next year looking for uh, another member. And then so when we met Ricky, we decided um, that we connected on a on a musical and, and you know, on a friendship level. And yeah. we made we formed Better Strangers. So like it's I guess it's a continuation of a bunch of projects that that we've been involved in. But it's a you know, it's definitely its own band that started, you know, mid 2020 during COVID. Um, but the motivation was just like, you know, we just knew we wanted to be in a band and, you know, when we all connected and we all kind of liked what we were doing, um, it was really exciting for us at the time, but obviously, you know, since then we've, we've grown once as a band, like, you know, since we formed to now we've grown into more, you know, it took us time to get to where we were musically at, you know, where we were in a place musically that we were all satisfied and happy with, you know, it just, that just takes time to to gel and, and grow together and just build that chemistry. Yeah, got it. I was able last night, I listened to at least the, the singles that are Spotify and a couple of articles that I saw in uh, Rolling Stone magazine, I think. And you guys, for, for the music point of view, I, it's like a, all the, the f- five or six tracks that are on Spotify, they are very different from one another. You are like a sort of a combination of uh, hip hop, uh, metal, progressive, shoegaze, it's, 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 right? It's a little, it's different element there in every song, right? It, am I accurate to say that? Yeah, I mean, the genres you mentioned, I would say are pretty accurate. Um, yeah. You know, there's like, you know, there's so many different inspirations that, you know, music that we listen to. Um, you know, I think now it's, you know, because those singles have just been over the last kind of two years. I think now, um, with what we're working on for our upcoming um, release, we, you know, definitely more pinned it down to something a bit more, you know, us, but it still has those elements of everything. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously it's heavy and it's rock and metal influence, but there's obviously that pop sensibility and the hip hop influence going in there, as well as, you know, as musicians, us wanting to, you know, maybe for, you know, for our own downfall being a bit too complex. So we just start getting into the more progressive stuff and that's just part of the sound, you know what I mean? And so it's just what we enjoy doing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. and with those, well, sorry, Joey, you were going to say something and I'm not going to stop you because you never say anything. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say that I was going to uh, follow up on what Nick said and say that, yeah, I think um, the stuff we're going to be releasing in 2023 is going to sound a lot more focused. Um, and a lot more like intentional stylistically. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it'll probably have elements of everything that we've released, but I think all the stuff that we have out currently is like, you know, you, you're hearing us still figure out exactly what, we're, what we want to do and kind of change a little bit. But yeah, I think what we're going to be releasing soon is going to be a lot more, a lot more uh, focused. Yeah, that's uh, at the beginning it's it, like a career, right? It, you you can try different things to see if, what will be the reaction of the market for a new bands playing your town. Uh, but then eventually you say, well, we need to define our style of music and, and, and focus and develop a strategy to be this type of band, right? As opposed to a little bit of everything. 
And uh, uh, that's the, why you don't want to be sort of a generalist, right? You, you want to be a, a band that is known for this type of music, whatever, whatever your style happens to be, right? So, and, uh, but it takes, it takes time. It takes, you know, like all of you getting together, see the reaction of the markets, you know, see what the direction of, you know, musical taste going for different people and, and, and develop your own, your own style, if you will, you know, so. Yeah, that's, that's what's cool. I mean, about the, the, the songs that are out. Um, and just to add to, to other points, it's um the best way I can think about it. It's like when you're, you're thinking of making, like, I don't know, you have like this dish that, that you really want to like make. And yep. so as you're making it, like you make it one time and it's just too salty and then you make it again. It's just, mm, I don't know. I think I, I, I didn't put enough salt on this one. Oh, it's lacks flavor. And right. so yeah. that's what, that's what those singles are. You know, um, yeah. it's just basically us cooking it up, figuring it out, you know, what exact, how exactly can we make this like the best version of it? And I think, and I think we're there, you know, with the, the stuff that, that we have almost ready. Um, and it's exciting because, because I think we can all, we all feel it, you know, it's like, and who knows, maybe in, in what comes after that, we're like, no, no, this one is the one, but I mean, we'll just, we'll just never know. So until it's out, but. Yeah, the only way to success is try different things and, and and then until you find your niche and then, you know, run with it and go for it, you know, so, but it takes, takes a lot of trials and testing and stuff and that's the only way to make it, you know. Um, the, the first, um, uh, I think the debut single was, uh, but I don't know your name. I think it was premiered on the Rolling Stone and uh, it, it have great reviews. So feel free to elaborate on how that, particular piece came together and what was the level of effort and how long did it take and so on. So, I mean, um, it, we actually, the whole process took a lot longer than, than we wanted to because <laughs> we, we were just going between people, like different people who were mixing the song. And we, the song, the version that, that, you, that you heard and the version that's out, we actually had for a lot more time before the release. Uh, so that, that song, and every song that we, we have out, it's like, there's still songs that we wrote three, four years ago that are out right now. And I mean, it's like, you, once, once we release the new stuff, you see where the progression led up to. Yep. Um, but yeah, I feel like that song, it's like we, we connected with it when, when we wrote it a lot and we really liked it a lot. But I feel like a, a lot of the process that it took to just release it because we were going between different mixes, um, and, and just kind of seeing what direction of sound we wanted to go with. It made us, it made us, it gave us more time to write new stuff. And because we were writing the new stuff, when we released Brown Your Name, we were just like, let's get it out there. You know what I mean? Let's start moving. But we were, we were already excited about the newer stuff that's, that was coming out. Got it. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that being said, like the, the it, it felt like it was the right song to put out. Um, just as like an introduction, just because, you know, it's um, kind of covers a pretty decent, you know, relative landscape of what we do musically, because it has, the, you know, kind of the more experimental psychedelic stuff, but it's also just, you know, a rock song. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with you. I think those songs are almost like the building blocks that, you know, you're kind of putting in place and each song kind of covers a different spectrum of what we do you know, like, but our name in comparison to Nicotine Dreams, which is completely different um, to get to where we are now. So I think, but our name made sense as the, as the first one, but yeah, I mean, it just, it, we'd written it probably, you know, a year and a half prior to it being released, something like that, maybe, a, you know, and, and it, the mix was done for a while, but we, you know, it's still one of those songs that held up when the conversation was coming up. Okay. What's the first song we're going to put out, you know, that was still uh, at the forefront. Um, so, you know, I think it, made sense as that first kind of release. Yeah, and, and Nico did Dreams with the second one, right? That you guys put out, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And you, it's uh, very different from the first one. Very good as well. Um, as I said before, I think you guys were sort of test the water, you know, put one, uh, release one track at a time and see what was the reaction <laughs> from the market and the audience and uh, people who were at uh, the see you guys, right? 
I, I don't think it was so market okay. based, if that makes sense. It really, I think, was us just trying different things, like on a personal musical level, and yep. seeing what what we liked. Because I, I think with like the stuff that we're going to be releasing this year that um we uh, we're talking about, um I think you'll hear how it's probably even less market based and more like personal gratification based. If that makes sense, it's more like yeah, that evolution is I think is more about us finding the kind of thing that we want to make musically that's like satisfying for ourselves, yeah. and and not that we don't think it has market potential or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's more, it's more uh, like intuition based, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. I, I feel like it's also like you, you hear some of the old stuff or old stuff, some of the stuff that we have out right now um, with like nicotine jeans where you go, Oh, this sounds like this band. And I'm sure they like, they like, it's like you listen to nicotine dreams and you're like, I'm sure this band loves Radiohead. Um, and we do it's they're a great band and like we don't shy away from that and I, I feel like with this new stuff it's more like oh this band sounds like better strangers there's like no there's no you know what I mean like when when a band tries to sound like the Chili Peppers it's like yeah they're rock but they're just doing what the Chili Peppers did or same thing with Led Zeppelin or stuff like that um, and it's just kind of that thing where it's like that nicotine dream song is like okay that's it's like an alternative psychedelic thing very radio heady and stuff like that and like, we just want it to be better strangers, um, kind of, I mean, it may sound a little cringy, but it's like making the genre of music, you know what I mean? It's kind of like its own, its own little thing. I know, um, I hear you. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. The, the, the next one that came was a rain check, correct? Yeah. Feel free to the same question. Feel free to elaborate how that came together. Or what I mean, I think, I, think, I, think, I think that's the bridge. That's the bridge between yeah. Our stuff thing. before and then yeah. our stuff now, which is like a little bit more, yeah. a little bit more like personal, a little bit more um, with I don't know with our, with with everyone's character a little bit, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Rain Chick was a bit more distinct um, to what you know individually as musicians and and you know songwriters what, what we did. Um, I think like it was definitely it felt like that song made the most sense like Yang said as the, as the bridge from that old stuff um, to the new stuff because I think it still has that you know that element that the old stuff has but it also has a bit more um, you know yeah like character and um, you know as, as, at least like it taps into a bit more of a side that you know we I, 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 I want to call it proggy but I don't want to get you know upset the prog fans you know what i mean <laughs> i think i think, I, like I think the, he has some <laughs> yeah i don't want to piss off like, any more genesis fans <laughs> yeah as far as the the um like the 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 songwriting and the technical aspect of it i think it definitely taps into a bit more of what we usually do now at least you know but it was a it was you know it was a song that had been in the in the running for a while and actually um since it was written quite a while ago, it's, it was also the first song that um, we totally kind of did everything for it. We produced it, we mixed it, we engineered it, we recorded it, um, totally done, just the four of us. Like what what you're hearing is, you know, nobody else has had like come into it. It's just like the four of us wrote the song and then did everything to put it out, which was exciting, but it's all, you know, it was also part of like a process and a, and a learning process that we're going through of of uh doing it ourselves you know so it it just felt like it was the right song to release at that time yeah no i'm with you uh, at least on spotify i think i saw five singles is there a possibility of releasing a, a cd down the road or a vinyl down the road or as far as the oh, cd oh. i mean like the those singles that are on um you know, spent because there's also the we we had re-released our first ever single, which was Lies, which was from our first EP. But uh, yep. we're definitely we're we're currently working on a on a on a project. I mean, um, you know, whether it, it becomes a physical thing, that's that's just dependent on how well it does, really, <laughs> and the demand for it. But as far as like an actual body of work, that's what we're working on right now. Um, we're working on an EP um, that we're finishing up, and you know, we're. We're excited about it. We're like really proud and passionate about what the music is doing and what the artistic vision behind it is. Um, but you know, we're just we're still we're still getting it all together before we can put it out. But you know, that's what's next on the agenda. Okay. 
Where guys have you guys play in kind of in each any any particular venues that you like of the venues that you have played, any upcoming tours that you have? Or or that have Miami, really. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> there's a little there's a little club in Miami called Gramps. And yeah. we Nick and I um and Joey have been playing there for years. It was one it was the only bar and slash club in Miami that would allow under 21 year olds to go play. Uh, so we've just constantly been going there ever since we were young. And now we're obviously, now we're all 21. So we get to, we, we play the outside stage and you know what I mean? It's like a, it's a bigger thing. Um, oh, well, Joey's still 20, but, <laughs> but soon we will all be 21. <laughs> um, I, I think that's the, it's like our, our little like Miami headquarters. It's like everyone knows when we play there, it's going to be a good show. And that, uh, yeah, that's the spot. Uh, and uh, any, you have any particular, you know, besides Miami, when, when Joe turned 31, is any other venues, any other cities? I mean, the reason I mentioned that here in DC, right? Although I live in the border with Virginia, Washington, we have so many venues. So many venues, great. So many. Yeah, Should Dave. Dave check, Grohl, check it out here, man. So there are many Grohl places talks like about here. um in on his in his book. Dave Grohl talks about growing up in that DC area. Yeah. And just going to all the venues uh that when when he was young that he says right now in the book he said that right now uh he doesn't know how many more are standing. Um, we know that there's one club called the Nine Thirty Club. Yeah. That I know of. Um. I've always wanted to play there. It's always like that round of like bands that are kind of transitioning from being a club band to like a bigger club. You know what I mean? Something like House of Blues. Um, That's really cool. Yeah. It's, yeah I mean, like, we'll, those types we'll, of scenes are we'll, cool we'll, because you can see everything like um, yeah. you, you can see where everything kind of starts blending in. It's, it's almost like the rain check aspect of it all, you know, to bring it back to the song. It's yeah. like, you you can see all the in between bands, and you can start kind of picking them out and be like, "This one is the one that I think like is yeah. solid enough to to take it to to the House of Blues type of situation." You know what I mean? Um, and what you're saying in DC, I mean, I live pretty close to Austin, and it's kind of the same way. You just there's 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 a ton happening, and it's it's cool to it's cool to see. Um, and so I it'd be it'd be cool to like. Cause we've never, we've never really like, um, other than Texas and, and, um, and, and Florida yeah. and, uh, and England now, yeah, which was pretty cool. Um, we haven't really like, you know, um, tested the waters in, in other States, yeah. um, in other scenes, which, which, you know, might be, might be cool. Um, it's just, um, going back to what we talked about in the beginning, it's the whole, well, you know, now we have jobs and, um, and, and it's, so it's kind of hard to sometimes, uh, step away from, from that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and also uh, there was something that, that, uh, that, I, that I wanted to, to touch on and I, and I completely, I completely fucking left my brain. Um, oh yeah. I mean, it's just, it's the, the touring aspect of it is, I mean, job or no job, it's, it's expensive too, you know what I mean? And, and, and taking that risk of like, all right, let's fucking drive across the country and, and, and see what happens um, without really knowing. I think you can, I, I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't, I can't hear you anymore. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's still yeah, going. Yeah. It's Ricky. He's still going. I, we, we can okay. hear no, we cannot. <laughs> I, I think uh, he, yeah. So it's you know I can I can I can send you the. Uh, is he there or no? Yeah, I can I can. Okay, now you're there. Yeah, feel free to. We lost you for a minute. Then. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I don't where I don't know where you lost me. I mean, I guess I was just wrapping it up and saying that like. Yeah. It's a. Uh, um. The, the whole touring aspect of it um yep. and, I, and it, I mean it, I know it's not just like just like this for for us but for every band it's it um yeah. um it can get really expensive really quickly yeah. um especially not knowing 
that you're going to have an audience there waiting for you to basically help fund the tour, you know? Yep. Um, so, so that's, that's, I mean, that's mainly why I don't think we've, we've really like started branching out, but I think we, we're also hoping that, you know, we market the EP well enough to where we can start opening. Well, I say the EP, um, you know, the body of work that we're working on. Um, yep. We're kind of hoping that like it it paves it opens the the door for us to be able to start visiting other cities and, and establishing yeah. fan bases here and there, which is something that we we haven't been able to do previously. Yeah, as I said before, if we have so many um, venues here, small, middle, and the big one, right? That uh, <clears throat> and I could recommend you. I send you a list of all the best one. I know all of them because I see fifty shows a year, right? So and I go everywhere, so. Um, uh, you know, when you are in town, I'm be happy to take you out to dinner, all of you or come to dinner to my house or whatever, you know, we, my wife Absolutely. is the best cook in the world. So, but <laughs> it, it, it's something that, you know, from a strategy point of view, right? Forget about music, right? I'm, I'm a computer scientist, right? So if, if music is very important to you and you really want to make it, so to speak, out there, uh, forget about touring now, right? Because you all have jobs, right? So you need to pay the bill or whatever, right? Leave at home. I will, I will, if I want your shoes, right? I will put another, you know, three or four tracks, some EP, release a single and release a CD. Start playing in, in Miami area and all the big venues, right? At the same time, you're putting good music out there. Start, you know, hitting hard the social media stuff, the, the Facebook, the Instagram, and so on and so forth, build an audience, right? And then from there, you know, explore other stay you can, well, but you will have an audience of, I don't know, but now more, maybe 500 people follow you to put a number there, maybe 2,000, 3,000, and so on and so forth. And then eventually you will be able to take the risk and, and decide, well, you know, going to that city, that city, that city will cost us whatever, 10 grand or something. We need to take two weeks off on our jobs and then and then uh, try to recover that investment and then take it for the next next level, I suppose, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the goal, really. Yeah. That's, that's what we're working towards. We just, you know, you got to get tricky for sure. Place. And yeah. um, building blocks are that, you know, the next thing that we're working on and, you know, you kind of have to do one step at a time to it's not just going to happen overnight it's just you got to keep going and and pressing on it if it's something that you really want to do you know what i mean yeah but i yeah. think i think yeah. if we have a, a good product and a good good music out uh stuff will fall into place Absolutely. it's just a matter it's a matter of having it's a matter of having the, the actual product done i mean we we've been talking about these songs and Every, everybody we talk to are always like, yeah, the new, the new stuff that we have is great. But right now we don't have like a go listen to it link um, just because it's not done yet. And, and we're just in that process of like, we're, we're right there. We're at the home stretch. You know what I mean? So sure. there's a couple of the songs that are fully done. We're just waiting to match them. There's a couple, there's, there's a couple that are mixing. We got to like just finish recording one. So it's like, it's, we're just almost there. Um so we're like ho kind of holding on the thread for just just a little bit longer, you know. Yeah. It's, it's the, the, it's the, the whole, I mean, and when we, we talked about, about the chili peppers, peppers earlier, um, um, all, all this footage, footage that you watch, watch you watch, watch them at their fucking prime, prime you, know? you know, and, and, and you, you see them, them just like, like, oh, dude, that, that is so easy. easy. Like you're, you're just hanging out, just going to venue, and you get picked up in a limo, you're just having a blast. Um, but you never, you never really get to see like this part, part of it, it you know, know? And, and uh and, 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 and when, when you're, you're in it it's like a oh shit like it's, it's a reality, reality check, check. And, and, and you, you have, have to there's, there's no blueprint, blueprint for that, that. i mean um and, and I, but, but i think, I think knowing, knowing what what i mean what the possibility could be right, right? You, you look, look at, at it from from from, from, from at the, the other, other side, side of okay we could get there not only that but um but we also have it so close to home, home here, here, I mean, with, with Nick's, Nick's, Nick's family, family, right? right? And, and so, so you, you're like, like, okay, I mean, it's, it's definitely, definitely attainable, attainable, you know what I mean? And, 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 and there's, there's enough examples of that. that. Um, for, for you to you be, be able, able to, 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 
to really, really just because when, when I think, I think about, about it, it um, and, and I, a, lot a lot of bands, bands kind of like, like cut, cut themselves, themselves short from, from you know transcending, transcending just, just because of that, that. I mean, like just life, life gets in the way, and and and, and, and just, just there's there's, there's a, a feeling, feeling of like this is probably not gonna work out, this and that. So they kind of just stop. But um, I think it's the whole it's with anything. I mean, you push through like the shittiness of it. Um, same, same with like, like working out and, and getting, getting super strong, strong. Like, like it's it's, it's hard, hard at first, first but, but um, I think, I think that's, that's what makes it worth it, it in, in, in the long, long run. run. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and can you turn off the delay plugin that you put on Ricky vocals <laughs> just now? <laughs> my there's my, 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 there's a lot of delay. Yeah. You've got like a double array yeah. in your voice. It's kind of it's like a it's a pretty badass effect, but you know. Yeah, that's cool. the fuck. <laughs> yeah, just, we, at least we, we can hear you. At least we can hear you. We should do hey, um, interview like that. Let's, Let's start, start uh, uh, tracking, tracking vocals, vocals right, right now. now. <laughs> they sound is good. good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's uh, that the decision that is is two things in my opinion, right? So I I'm older than you, uh, and I've been listening to music. Uh, I don't know, two hours a day from the last 50 years. So it comes down to two things. What is a good strategy and then it's goal. That's the only thing that's important. The rest, you know, you will get there, right? So I know you have jobs, you're very young and so the world, but if you have a goal and we know for a fact that we want to get there and we want to make it, then you need to work with a, a good yeah. person or among yourself to develop a good strategy and say, well, we are now January the 14th. So by March, April, we want to be here. Um, by June, we want to hear. By September, we want to be touring and then and then get you know, and work hard on it and develop a good strategy. Easy for me to say because I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not a musician. You know, I I go to see uh, you know I go to see a concert tonight. I go to see America, right? I, I went to uh, I saw Genesis. You know. Uh, many times, but I don't, I don't, I don't care if the band have a good night's sleep, but the bus was late, or somebody didn't show up, you know, at the same time, or then we were to wait for them, right? So easy for me to say, but, but it's, it's, it's if, if there's a goal is important enough, you, 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 you will make it. And, and from the music that I have listened for you guys, the four or five tracks or whatever Spotify, it's very good. It's very good. It has potential. Thank You're you. not there yet, you know. My 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 cloudy point of view, right? So my 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 two cents there. You're not there, but you have enough potential to get there, whatever that means. You know what I mean? Uh, if you like, mm -hmm. if you if you have the goal, if you really want to kick ass, like you say, and and do well in life, right? If, if music is just a, a part time hobby, I already have a job, work, you know, living at home, my dad pay the bills, whatever. It's, it's okay, you know, music. Like me, you know, I, I go to see a lot of concert. I don't know how to read music. I don't play an instrument. I, you know, I did okay in my life and, uh, and I go to see concert, right? I'm not a musician, right? So, but it, but it's a tough life, man. It's not, no easy, right? Then again, um, if it was so easy, everybody would do it, right? So, yeah. But if, if the goal, if you really want to do it, you, you will find a way, right? You will, music, your music will find its place in the world, if you will, you know? Yeah, we definitely have the ambition and the vision, so we'll just get to it. Well, I hope to see you playing in DC one day, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. You will come yeah. to the house to get dinner or drink beer, you know. <laughs> so what? Uh, so any? Um, if you could, if you could open a, a show for any artist in particular, is it Richard, Richard, Chili Pepper, or or any? I'd, I'd say I'd say realistically. Realistically, um, that would be the biggest, the best fit would probably be Deftones. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I think, I mean, other Deftones than the fact are... that we're massive Deftones fans, I think yeah. musically that would be cover the, I, I don't know, I feel like their fans would like our stuff. And I, oh, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that, and then like we're gonna get crucified, like like we did last time. I said, <laughs> but, yes. um, but that's I, what I. But you know, obviously, there's too. tons of bands that that we'd love to to open for. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's Deftones or Queens of Stone Age or, um, you know, we there's Mars so many. Volta. Yeah, like you know, Tool, whatever it is. That, but but I think Deftones is is a good middle ground on, you know. <laughs> balancing everything other than you know my personal you know 
desire to want to open for whoever it is which is what i mean when i say tool you know what i mean like that's just the first <laughs> I, don't, I, don't yeah. I, I, I i just want to open for them <laughs> i just want to be around them <laughs> yeah well i i, I hope as i say before right if this is a goal of yours as a band right uh you know put in writing you know in your computer monitor or whatever your kitchen and look at it every day and start uh you know, with baby step, right? You know, uh, to, to you know, towards that particular goal. If that particular goal is important, I mean, it's, uh, you guys have a lot of good, good element on what I'm what I'm hearing your music, and uh, you have the full future in front of you. You're very young. You're not done. Have done any stupid stuff? I, I hope, and uh, you, you know, you have. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, yet. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, it's uh, if. If you know, if you if you, if you really want to do it, you know, you should go for it. So hopefully one day, I will call you again for an interview, and you guys say, no, 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 we are too busy. We cannot talk to this guy from from this picture. But uh, we'll, 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 we'll always, always have, have time, time for Claudio. Claudio. Yeah, thank you, thank right. you. Yo, you guys are are going well, man. Um, Thanks. Yeah, no, no problem. We, uh, uh, quick question for you, Nick. Um, it it had been difficult because. Or for you all you it had been difficult for you to go forward because you know nick's family is kind of important in the music and you know his dad is very well known or has opened doors a little bit or or it doesn't make a difference i think the no, big I mean, I, door I, I, that opened was that nick went on tour and that he brought back like his musical yeah. uh, expertise and everything and made us better um yeah. and like just seeing how stuff works in the real world at, at that level yeah and applying it to our level um it, i think that's the biggest that's probably the biggest and best thing i mean we're like like we said we all went to see him in dc like we're all we're all we're all the biggest like each one of us is the biggest nick collins fan you know at, at, at those shows because you know we we support him and, and you know we're always like we always want him to do to keep going with it you know um but that's definitely the best. The best outcome is the is the fact that that he brought it back to us and that we grew with him as well, in our own yeah, ways. I mean, of course. I think I think as far as like to, to answer your question, um, you know, it obviously you know have to be self aware enough to know that that opens a few doors and you know you have advantages over other people. But you know that doesn't count for anything <laughs> if you're not actually going out and doing it and delivering it. Yeah. in a good way you know delivering a good product and actually backing it for real so you know it's it's all like a learning progress I mean as far as me going on the road it's like Yang said I mean it's been good that you know being exposed to that style of touring and you know how almost essentially the finish line of where you want to get to you know like yep. that's where you know that's where you want to be to be around that has been super insightful and and, and you know just been able to learn so much um, you know I'm lucky that I've got three guys in my band that are supportive and, you know, don't give me a hard time for going away. Um, but I always try to, you know, make sure that when I'm, when I come back, it's, you know, it, it, it was worth it. And that, you know, what I can bring back to the band is beneficial for all of us, you know? So I think it's, it, it definitely, there's, there's definitely more positives than there are negatives, but, you know, um, as far as like the eyes, um, you know, there's, there's sure there's sometimes there's like a bit of, you know, uh, a pressure or, or maybe, a, you know, fans desire for us to be something that we're not. But at the end of the day, you just have to live with that. I mean, there's no point in dwelling on it. You know, that's just part of life, you know, and there's no way around it. Um, but I think overall, it's definitely way more positive than it is negative. Yeah. yeah. It's also one of those things where Nick, I, th I feel like he has the drive. Like, obviously, he's doing his job as a drummer with Genesis and, and with his dad's tour. Um, and now coming up with Mike and the Mechanics, it's going to be like, it's, you know, he's just a touring drummer, but when he's still on tour, he's like the first guy to message everybody like, all right, we have a call at this time. So, you know what I mean? Every, he's like, we still that everyone is always on top of everything. Um, even, even when he's away, like we, we try our best to really, to really do stuff that, you know, as a band of just four people, there's other stuff than just playing and writing music. Um, if we want to succeed, everyone. It's got to put on different hats and and do different things. So, yeah. Um, so we all, you know, even when he's away, we're still we're still we're still all together at the end of the day, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Well, that's 45 minutes. That's all I have, guys. Keep on working hard. Let me know if I can help you in any way from here. Uh, I mean, I, I will post that interview in my YouTube channel, on the radios, on, on Facebook. So we'll get a lot of traction. I will send you a direct link for you guys to do the same. But if I, as I say, if I, if I'm in town, I would love to see you guys playing, playing live one day in, in, uh, in, in Florida and Miami. And if you, you know, if I can help you with some venues or with some names here in DC or, or in a way to promote your stuff, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. You know, music has, has given me uh, so much satisfaction in my life, and uh, and, I'm, I, and I like to talk to people. So, and, uh, if I can help a little Thank bit, you. keep it possible. Thank, Thank you. you. Hopefully, we we'll see you in DC. Oh no problem. Take it easy, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thanks.